So that is 14 minutes, 16 seconds. As far as individual leaders, for Tennessee Tech in the rushing department, Eddie Hayward, eight runs for 49 yards, the longest of those being 28 yards. For Cincinnati, Leonard Cry, number 36, six carries for, listen to this, 105 yards, the longest being 53 yards. Al McKinney, number 44, the fullback, nine carries for 37 yards. In the passing department, Patrick Pope has hit only three of 12 for a net of 30 yards and has been sacked four times. McCoy, on the other hand, from Cincinnati, eight of 11 with one interception and a total of 99 yards. In the pass receiving, Gillstrap for Tennessee Tech, three receptions for 30 yards. Davis for the Bearcats, four receptions for 60 yards. Punting isn't that much difference, except Tracy Graham has punted it four times with the longest punt being 41 yards, average of 38.8. Overgall, on the other hand, only one time kicking the ball, and he kicked that one 49 yards. Let's talk about some of the big plays. At 12.01, McCoyne went to throw the ball, his first pass intercepted by Mike Brown in a 13-yard return. Then it was Cry, 10:28 uh, to play. Uh, Cincinnati took over. Cry took a 53-yard run, and McCoy ended up on that drive taking a one-yard touchdown. Then Insulaco kicked a 23-yard field goal. That was all in the first quarter. Then it came to the second quarter, and uh, Tracy Graham's punt was blocked by Noble, but the big penalty for the illegally batted ball gave Tech the ball back. Two plays later, Pope went around left end for 33 yards, and Gil White took it in for a touchdown, six yards. Then Weeks kicked off to McKinney. Uh, they fumbled the ball. Edgington recovered it after Jimmy Hull put the crushing tackle on. And we'll talk about more later on as we see Cincinnati's McKinney receives the kick. He takes it over the 20-yard line. He gets up to the 28. The ball comes loose. Jurek has it, but it was called, they say, by the turf. They're going to say it was bounced out by the turf. Good hit in there. Jason Green, I believe, number 80. Uh, was down there on the tackle. Also, Tennessee Tech's Ron Jurek, the free safety, who has, done, who has done an admirable job this year. One more big play from the first half. Tackett, on the one-yard line, fumbled the ball, and Dwayne Alexander recovered it for Tennessee Tech. And the score is not at 10 to 10 at the end of the first half. Cincinnati Bearcats with the ball. And McCoyne looking to throw right. The quick pass is complete to Mukes. And Mike Brown chases him down. It's a first down for the Bearcats. Well, you're going to see a lot of that, I think, this, first, uh, this second half because Tech gave them that pass the whole first half almost any time they wanted it. Uh, the Tech defense with the four-man fronts playing it soft, not wanting to let the big one go. And they're going to give that little underneath pass. Of course, that one turned out to be 10-plus yards. I don't think they want to do that too often. McCoy has Sanders split to the wide to the right. Mukes, Roosevelt Mukes over on the left. They send McKinney in motion. Cry in the backfield gets the call and as a flag on the play, he twists and turns and finally Marlon Placide brings him down. I believe you're going to have uh, up front there holding. It was thrown right at the line of scrimmage. We'll watch right here. McCoy simply hands it off, and it's off to the races again. A very hard man to bring down. And you hit it right on the head, Jerry. It's a holding call against Cincinnati Bearcats. And that'll back him up. Notifying a five-yard run by Cry. And that really cost him 10 yards. A five-yard run plus the, you know, it's going to be first and 15 now. Tennessee Tech doing well on penalties. The first half, what, they had two penalties for 17 yards. It's going to actually be first and 20, 10-yard 10 yard, 10 holding. You're not even paying attention. Yes, I am. I, I agree with you totally. I was just trying to figure out that call. Yeah, Tennessee Tech not having the, the, the problem that they've had in the other games with just uh, two penalties called against them as opposed to Cincinnati's four. McCoy play action. Now he's chased, and it's caught by Sanders to at the original line of scrimmage. Mike Brown makes the hit with Bruce Hatfield. And down on his back goes McCoy. Good rush in there by JoJo Swafford. And just as he releases the ball, he is leveled. It's going to be enough to make it back to the original line of scrimmage. One thing that's interesting, McCoy was, well, we'll watch this play again. There you see Placide, Swafford. Well, there's actually more than JoJo back there. JoJo <laughs> was just the one that kind of jumped on top of him, but uh, everybody else was around him too. 
second down and 10 after they reached the original line of scrimmage. McCoy back to throw in the pocket. Got time, and he's got a man open. Mukes, he turns it at the sideline and is pushed out of bounds by Terry Wright. A big pickup for Roosevelt Mukes. And that's the same pattern we saw earlier. Just throw it right out there in the flat. Tech will give it. Uh, will give them that play. You watch the defender now. is backed up. Soft paddling right there. Nobody around him. And St. Phil actually looks like he might have got caught out of position there, but uh, nevertheless. 24-yard 24 24 pickup. Pick and by and the way, uh, McCoy is now over 6,000 yards in his career at Cincinnati in passing. There you see a good shot of the young man from Livingston. He's going for the screen, and it falls incomplete to Tackett, chased by Squires. Thomas Squires and Jonathan Barsdale chasing him back there. McCoy had to turn it loose quickly. You watch right here. Squires all over him. A little holding there. <laughs> John says, wait a minute, guy. Now turn loose the jersey so I can go back here and level your quarterback. Second down and 10 for Cincinnati. They have Davis and Mukes in there. A bit unusual. Usually those two alternate. Heiss is in on the left side, and they're working out of the shotgun. Looks like McCoy is checking off at the line. Doesn't like the defensive set. He's got a man open long at the 10-yard line. Mukes picks it up. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Not enough rush on the passer. A matter of fact, no rush. As McCoy has plenty of time, the receiver shakes free down the right-hand side, and it's six points. We'll watch it. A beautiful Close snap. pass. Good really protection up there. front, and watch this. An absolute strike right over the defenders of Tennessee Tech. Hustling to get back there is Brown and, and Isom, but not enough. And Cincinnati goes up on top 16 to 10. In Salako for the point after, it's good. The score is 17 to 10. Cincinnati with 13 minutes, 26 seconds to play. So it didn't take them but just over a minute, a minute 34 seconds to put the ball in the end zone. It came on the heels of those two big pass receptions, Steve, or actually three pass receptions that were good for over 20 yards. It doesn't take long to move the ball down the field with that kind of uh, reception. Rosie Mukes starts. Davis is his backup man coming in. They usually alternate, and uh, Mukes doing a job in this ball game. Tennessee Tech, who will receive the ball for the first time in this half with 13 minutes and 26 seconds left on the clock, again, needs something big to happen. And look at the lighting in this stadium. It's an old stadium as the sun is going down here at Cincinnati on Halloween. And uh, the lighting is just not that impressive. You have to wonder how Mukes is able to see the ball as well as he was. Gary Overgall will kick it away for Cincinnati. Deep for Tennessee Tech, James Hurd is back in the ball game. So apparently his uh, injury in the first half didn't bother him too much. There you saw a shot of Lorenzo Chicken Rivers. And on the other side, I believe Sam Brooks. Sam Brooks is back in there. Number 25, Cookville native. And the Bearcats bounce around a little bit on the kickoff. Overgall puts it deep. Rivers will take it at the one. He's going up the middle, and he's pounded oh. backwards at the 15. Oh. He hit a wall. Mundlin was in there, number 47, Vince Mundlin. Uh, he hit the defender. One of the guys went up and tried to block him. That didn't work. He hit the, the receiver, and down he goes. We'll watch it again on the replay. It's Rivers. And watch coming right up the middle here. Sammy Brooks, I believe it is, tries to put a hit on him. And he knocks Brooks back into Lorenzo Rivers. And it's going to be Tech's ball on the 15. Tech goes with three wideouts, two to the left, Campbell and Goodlow. Gilstrap over on the right. Fake up the middle, the option play, and Pope keeps it. He is stopped at the line of scrimmage. There to lay on top of him is number 45, Mike Kelly, the linebacker from Cincinnati, Ohio. Leshnack also there, number 42, the defensive tackle, and number 99, Andrew Stewart, the defensive end. Nothing doing seen, on that outside. I haven't seen a tackle, a defensive tackle, wear number 42 before. Well, he, he probably just likes that number, Steve. There's nothing <laughs> that says you can't wear that defensive tackle. Pope takes the snap, rolling left. 
It is Ooh. incomplete behind Gilstrap. He was right on the first down marker, too. Hits Gilstrap right in the knees. Good pass defense. A little confusion on the part of the Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles. And all of a sudden, it's third down and a bunch. And Patrick Pope being forced out of the pocket many times, having to roll right and left as the University of Cincinnati rush is really strong. Campbell splits to the right. Gilstrap and Goodlow, the G-man, to the left. Hayward is in at fullback behind Pope. Pope chased in the backfield again. And he is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Credit that tackle to number 38 for the Cincinnati Von Bearcats. Booker. Booker, and Booker was a probable starter. He hurt his ankle last week. He's the leading tackler on the team for Cincinnati. And uh, with an ankle injury, he looks like he's back 100%. Booker, I believe, he's from Cincinnati also, and he is a freshman, leads the team in tackles. So Graham will stand on his own end zone line, punting the ball away, Boy, and he gets a... Uh, off the right hand side of his foot, but it bounces well. Mukes takes it, and Mukes breaks a couple of tackles before he stops. Gets down inside the 40 yard line at about the 37. As the bodies fly all over the place, a very short kick. Cincinnati's going to have an excellent field position again. We'll watch right here. Good handling of the ball, one hander there by the runner. That's 21, Roosevelt Mukes, and he takes it upfield, knows how to run north and south. They spot it at the 36. Cincinnati has a first and 10, and the field position can really hurt you. Well, as they we see, it did hurt Tennessee Tech right here. Unless Tech makes something happen big, it could be another six points. Here come the linebackers, and McCoy going for the end zone. It's incomplete, intended for Davis, and good coverage by Antony Sinkfield. Antony Sinkfield step for step with the receiver. A little disagreement by the partisan crowd here in Cincinnati. You'll see McCoy lays it up can throw the ball a mile, but simply led the receiver a little bit too much. It's going to fall to the turf, and it'll bring up a second down to 10. 11.53 to play in the third quarter. Cincinnati up by seven. Scored quickly in this quarter, and now Tennessee Tech is once again on the defensive. Tech having to play catch-up uh, both in the first half and now again in this half needs something big to happen. McCoy looking to the right. He's got a man over the middle, and... There was some contact there against Sanders. Sanders wants a call, but uh, incidental contact. When you go over the middle, you're going to get some knocks around. Well, I used to like that. Uh, back in the old days, you could hit them within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Uh, or at least we did. I think it was legal. And, you know, I'd like to catch that guy coming across the middle looking back at the quarterback and hand him his helmet, you know. <laughs> McCoy drops back in the shotgun formation, third down and 10. Tennessee Tech stalling uh, Cincinnati's drive here. McCoy chased out of the pocket. Now he throws it long to Davis, and Davis diving, can't get to it. But that was a beautiful pass. Again, McCoy throws it where people should be. Are gonna, are gonna have trouble intercepting it, although Brown picked off the first pass of the game. As McCoy released that ball, Tennessee Tech's Bruce Hatfield leveled him. Overgaw is in to try a 53-yard field goal. That's going to be a bunch. And Insulaco, the regular field goal kicker, but Overgaw kicks him past the 50-yard uh, mark. Now it's a punt. It's a quick kick. Overgaw sends it down. It's going to bounce, and it will not go into the end zone. Great coverage by Cincinnati, number 54. On the coverage for them is Mike Shell, or Mick Shell, from Sandusky. Mick Shell wow. was there, and that's the poocher kick done with a little bit different flavor. Doesn't matter how it was done, Tennessee Tech will start deep in its own territory again. They have and you should have known that there was something coming up because uh, Davis, the holder, was not there to hold the ball on the snap at first, and then he realized, hey, we're supposed to fool these guys, ran back as if to hold the ball, and they snapped it to Overgall. Tennessee Tech first and 10 on their own five-yard line. And Pope gives it to Rivers in the backfield. Rivers will pick up two. Two yards. It's been tough sledding for Lorenzo Rivers as he has been scouted so well. I'm sure they have those linebackers king on him. Anytime he's into that I formation, they know 
uh, with reasonable certainty he's going to be either have the ball or be around the ball. So they've been keying on him, and as a result, he's not been, been able to do much from the line of scrimmage tonight. Good low and gill strap. The G-men split wide to the right. Campbell to the left. Hayward in the backfield, and Lorenzo Rivers lines up behind him. Patrick Pope will take the snap for Tennessee Tech. Give it to Hayward, and he picks up four. Hayward right up the gut. He's behind the blocking on that left-hand side of the Tennessee Tech offensive line. The only common opponent, by the way, for these two teams, Austin P. Cincinnati will play them later in the season. Of course, Tennessee Tech beat Austin P. 14-9 in Clarksville for their first OVC victory of the season. Well, you know, Tech's played uh, reasonably well this ball game, been the victim of a couple of big mistakes, but uh, have nothing to be ashamed of. They played well last week, and in my opinion, should have won that one. Tennessee Tech, the give is to Rivers, and Rivers breaks through for a first down over the 20-yard line, Lorenzo Rivers. That's something we haven't seen yet in this game. That's the first time we've seen it, Steve. The Lorenzo, Lorenzo Rivers having the, the misdirection. Now, look at that little trap right back against the grain. He goes up, picks his hole, nothing there. Good says, block okay, by Kelly, Avery. Yeah, Kelly Avery says, okay, Kelly, got him away here. Let me get a few more yards. And as a result, picks up a very big first down, gets Tech out of the hole. And Cincinnati has another young man playing for them from Tennessee. Richard Rhodes is a native of Lebanon, Tennessee. We wanted to get that in before the game was over. Well, we got some we, folks watching yes, in Lebanon. we do. Patrick Pope. He's chased again in the backfield. This time he gets free. He's over the 20, and he's going to go out of bounds at about the 23. Oh, and a very unnecessary flag right there as I think it was Goodlow. Pope was already on his way out of bounds. Goodlow came up and hit some from somebody from behind. Mm. That's a big one. We'll watch right here. He's just going to nudge. There it is. Just going to nudge him, but that's all it takes. He's saying he turned his back on him, but the referee will have none of that. It will be assessed against Tennessee Tech. And as Goodlow goes to the side to have a little discussion with head coach Jim Ragland, Tennessee Tech will be backed up. Nine minutes and 46 seconds left in the third quarter. Tech on the bottom, 17 to 10. And we'll have the ball, but it's uh, first down and, you know, uh, one, another one of those bus tickets and a transfer to get to the first down. The first down marker is all the way up here at about the 33-yard line. They'll be on the 12. Tennessee Tech. Two men split to the left. They got Gilstrap split to the right. And the give is to Rivers up the middle. He finds a hole and is tackled by the feet at about the 15-yard line, pick up a three. Oh, good blocking up there, reasonably good blocking. Brian Wall, number 78, opened up a little bit of a hole, but uh, closed very quickly as Rivers just gets up, well, I'll call it five yards, four yards. Speaking gets it up of to good blocking, the uh, they have Clark Ritchie, an offensive guard who is called the most consistent offensive lineman by uh, Jim Ragland. He's number 69. They give to, or Pope pulls it in. He gets to the 20, and he is pulled out of bounds by number 45, and that's Kelly again. Mike Kelly, the linebacker, the inter uh, inside linebacker, has been there all night. Richie has a 3.9 QPA in mechanical engineering, and that's quite a feat for any person in athletics. He is nominated for an academic All-American status. Well, I'll tell you Clark what, has my, been the offensive lineman of the week twice in the Ohio Valley Conference. My but. hat's off to him with that kind of grade point average, knowing that curriculum very well, being an a engineering graduate myself, uh, my hat is off to that young man. Pope in the pocket. He's chased out. Now he goes across the 25 and is pushed out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Art Sheffield over there, number nine, to push him out of bounds. That's going to bring up fourth down and about six. Tech will have to kick it away. And again, Tracy Graham will get to try his foot at it. He's had some relatively short punts tonight and has put Cincinnati in a very good field position most of the time. This time this he gets off a high kick. And it is fielded by, is that Webb? Yes, it is at John the 47-yard line. So not a very good punt for Tracy Graham, about 30 yards. Maybe. Yeah, that's that, that's one factor that's been a big factor in this game. Cincinnati's played on Tech's end of the field all night, all afternoon and night. And, of course, you can't do that. You can't continually hold them out of the 
end zone when they're in great field position. It's, it's just uh, very, very difficult to do. McCoy gives to McKinney over the 50-yard line. Squires hits him. He rolls out, and Sinkfield and Brown put him down along with Jimmy Isom. Jimmy Isom was there to put on the finishing touches, and that's the way you've got to tackle that young man. If you want to, if you want to arm tackle him, you'll watch him go over, uh, you know, over your head. McKinney, six foot, 193 pounds from Overland, Ohio. He's a junior and a very impressive runner. He's a big guy for a tailback. Of course, when you got Leonard Cry in there, you don't have to be too small. Cry at 216. Pass is complete. They're going to say he caught it. That is complete. It's going to be third down and about a yard. Excellent catch there. We'll watch it again. McCoy throws it a little bit too far in front, but look at this leaping grab. One hand. Let's see. Hughes. Hughes. Yes, he does have it. Has it and gets the feet down inside. Roosevelt Mukes making the catch. He's been a terror in the third quarter for Tennessee Tech. Talented young man. No third tree. down and two for Cincinnati Bearcats. Tennessee Tech showing the eight-man front. The give is to McKinney, and he gets a first down before being piled up. Well, there's an awful lot of Golden Eagles over there. Good gang tackling. Jimmy Isom over there. Marty uh, Thomas Squires over there. We'll see. He was initially held up by Singfield. Uh, Mike Thornton there. Every, everybody on the defensive squad on that side looks like was on that tackle, but to no avail as he picks up the first down. Jimmy Isom is 11th in NCAA 1AA play in interceptions. He is first, sixth, check that, in punt returns. Tracy Graham is third in punting, but is having a tough time tonight. They send Fry in motion, and they pitch it to Tackett. Isom Tackett. is there. Tackett is stopped way back at the 45-yard line. Jimmy Isom slices through, makes a shoestring tackle for a loss of about five. Call it a loss of four and a half. Jimmy Isom coming through from the free safety position. Watch right here. There you go. Says, oops, I got gotcha. you. That's both feet. That's all you need. Jim Raglan says Jimmy Isom is the best free safety in the OVC and possibly in one double-A ball. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Second down and 14 for the Bearcats. McCoin back to throw. There's a flag on the play, and it is caught by Mukes. Sinkfield pulls him down, and and Stewart puts the finishing touches on him. And a little exchange between, uh, who was that? Thomas Squires, Squires and the rest and of the Cincinnati bench. Somebody else, but the flag was thrown right at the line of scrimmage. Right at the line of scrimmage and thrown early. I would say it was a holding call. Offsides against it, against Tech. That's a big turn of events. Must have lined up offsides. There you see Sinkfield trying to pull him down by the jersey. Pulls him down, and right there is a little extracurricular activity going on between Squires and one of the one of the Bearcats. McCoy out there trying to make the decision for the Bearcats, and we'll see what that decision is. They will take the penalty, and it will be five yards for offsides, bringing up a second down and nine for the Bearcats. 6.57 to play in the third quarter. Cincinnati on top of Tennessee Tech, 17 to 10. And McCoy uh, was quoted in the paper as saying that he was having some trouble convincing people that Tennessee Tech was for real, that they were a good team. I'm sure that uh, Coach Davis in the, at halftime had no trouble convincing the rest of the team. Oh. Pass is dropped, tipped by McKinney. Yeah. Kept right in his hands, the worst place you can hit. No, it's not the worst place you can hit that young man. He's caught him all night, but Squires, they're a little bit too late. That's the old tip drill, Steve, and that's the kind that are dangerous. We'll watch it right there. A couple of tech players around it, but nobody able to get to it. Replay of the uh, Kenneth Gilstrap pass that was tipped up in the air, and all the receivers were either going after Gilstrap or uh, chasing the ball and uh, didn't see it pop off his helmet. This time, McCoy will work out of the shotgun on third down and nine. Here comes the blitz. McCoy lost it for Sanders. Complete touchdown, Cincinnati. 
Wright got caught in. He tried to bat it away at the last minute and then tried to strip it, but it didn't work. McCoy sets up right there and throws it about 35, 40 yards in the air. A strike, and Tennessee Tech suffers another score against them as the Cincinnati Bearcats put another six on the scoreboard. On a third down and nine, you just don't want to see that happen. In Tulaco, in to try the point after. And he hasn't missed one all year, and he keeps the string alive. Well, he kicked that one not only through the upright, but over the concession stand and everything else. We'll, we'll watch it again right here. The coin sets up, and he can absolutely hum that ball. Leads the receiver just right. The tag defender can't strip it away, and it's six points Cincinnati. So McCoy just keeps piling on to that record, doing an outstanding job for the Bearcats. As we say, he was lured away from Tennessee Tech by Watson Brown, a Cookville native who was the head coach up here at the time. Tennessee Tech suffering at the hands of Mr. McCoy this evening as he has thrown the ball well. I don't have a total for the evening, but it has got to be impressive. He had uh, passing in the first first half. He had 99 yards, and he's added about uh, 60 to that. Uh, I think he added 60 on one plate of mukes. <laughs> 24 to 10 is the score. A two touchdown lead for the Bearcats of Cincinnati. 6:31 to play in the third quarter, and once again, Cincinnati has come out strong. Well, there's nobody that wants any more. Did you see Overgall there? Oh, yeah. He made a fake at the ball like he was going to quick kick it. Cincinnati, these guys are tricky, too. They enjoy those plays. <laughs> like the quick kick that Overgall, the punt that he uh, made. Well, Lorenzo Rivers back deep for Rivers takes it at the one. Comes up the middle, and he breaks through the line. This time he gets past the 20 to the 25, and I believe that's his longest return of the evening. Jerry. And there's a little extra quicker activities going on. Down there, there's another flag. It's going to be a personal foul, I believe, against, yes, it is, against Cincinnati. Once again, Cincinnati, uh, of course, they're frustrated against a 1AA school. They're, they're on their homecoming, and they're supposed to win this game big in Tennessee Tech. Uh, you have to get them. Oh, well, you see, away. see that Lorenzo Rivers, with that ability we've talked about so many times, cuts it back up. He's finally hammered down at the 25-yard line. The infraction occurred back down the field from that. Rivers has taken a pounding tonight, too. Yes, he has. He and Pope, the microchips on the team, and they have really taken some licks tonight, Rivers especially. Goodlow goes into motion. Pope gives it to Rivers up the middle, and he's across the 40 to the 42, pick up a two yards. I think underneath all that uh, making the tackle was number 85, Chris Asbeck, who had a leg of, of Rivers hanging on to it. It's going to be a pickup of two. Tennessee Tech with 6.03 remaining in the third quarter needs to do something right here. Asbeck at 6'3", 264 pounds, compared to Rivers, 5'8", 175. Goodlow in motion left. Pope rolling right. He's looking and it's complete to Gilstrap across the 50. It's a first down for Tech, and there's another flag. Another flag. I think face it's going to be face mask. So Cincinnati really being hurt by the penalties. Let's see it again, Jerry. Pope with a lot of pressure on him. Gets it up over the outstretched arms of the defenders. And you see Gilstrap rolling immediately. There's the face mask. Oops. Good call by the referee. I would say they'll call it an inadvertent face mask. In that case, it would be a five-yard penalty. We'll see what the call is. That's what it is. 42-yard line for Tennessee Tech, so they are putting together a good drive. Well, based on that penalty, and uh, they had a first down anyway. They had a first down with Gilstrap's reception, but that penalty puts them into Cincinnati territory for, I believe, the best of the penetration of the uh, second half. First and 10 for Tennessee Tech. They'll go with Hayward and Rivers in the backfield. Goodlow goes into motion. He may have cut a little soon, and they throw a flag. Pope up the middle, and he's got room. It will be nullified more than likely, but Pope cuts across. He's got one man to beat. He's down to the three, and I believe they'll call Terry Goodlow for cutting up too soon. <coughs> on the uh, motion. Boy, it's a beautiful play to be nullified, but it the discussion is going to be way back upfield. 
Tennessee Tech already oh, making its way that way, and that's what the call is. That it hurts. Was illegal what, motion. I'll tell you what, that was an excellent run by Patrick Pope as the pocket collapses very quickly. Gets a good block up there by Richie, and another good block by one of his D backs. Mark Campbell puts a block on somebody, and look at Pope just being able to move and and uh, shake and do all those kind of things. Gilstrap, good block by Gilstrap. Yeah, Gilstrap too. came back and put a block on somebody, but it's all to no it's all to no avail as Tennessee Tech is backed up. It'll be first down and fifteen. What? Well, it looks like more than 15. One, two, three, four, five, six. They can't give him more.